I'm dead. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It's sorry, it says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh, message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy merch. Buy merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. We are in the midst of the stream of the imperishable flame. We are. We are. Um, up next is another song by this same band. Oh, really? Vorga. Yeah, this is the... Remember, we're doing the first song in the album and then the last song in the album. That's right, that's right. So, where maybe things those... got better for the homie. Who I, knows? Where did I get the... Oh, okay, I got those lyrics from... Uh... Okay, so this one is from DJ Ben. My goodness, this freaking thing, I swear to God. Vorga uh... Terminal. Do you want me to what, send what, it to you in a text? What email did we use here for this one? The secret one. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Are you talking about Trello? Yep. Uh, Vin and Sorry, uh... Patreon. Okay. Talk to the people. Um, yeah, guys, don't forget we're up on, um, I don't, I don't actually know how to, how to put a mod. I actually saw today how to put a mod, but when I can figure out how to put a mod, hell, I'll put you in there and, um, uh, Dwayne, I can put you there too, but I don't really know how to do it at this point. No I'm sure what? it's something super simple, but I don't see it. <laughs> and we got the lyrics. Praise God for victory. Yes. Uh, Good job, whoever got me those lyrics. That must have been middle, right? It's always middle. Uh, Middle's the one that sent me the email. So, it was either middle or... Or it was DJ Ben, I don't know. I wonder if I could just right-click on... Hold on, I'm going to right-click... Wait, hold on. Hold on. Mute, mute, mute. For the live stream. Manage. Oh, I can only see how to mute you. Hell, I can't see how to add you as a, as a mod yet. We're okay. All right, guys, here we go. <clears throat> here we go. Song numero dos. Song numero dos. I think YouTube is a song behind, so this is Vinny's story in the past. So I send a warning from the future on Rumble. <laughs> uh, okay. Huh? Okay, perfect. All right, guys. Here we go. Let's song do it. numero dos. What was the name of the song again? This one is called Terminal. Uh, the same band. Terminal. Borga. Terminal. Borga. Let's do it, baby. Let's do it. Let's do it.
man, these guys can write. Yeah, they can. They can write their ass off. Holy hell. <sighs> yes, they can. Where are they from? They're an American band? Ger Germany. So English is not even their first. I mean, German and English are pretty freaking close together. So I'm not going to be too impressed. But I'm uh, th these guys can write, man. I just appreciate people that can just straight up write, bro. Uh, like when, when I saw, like, you had some, like, old journal one time. And you had written something about rooms or boxes or something. It was like the craziest thing I'd ever read in my life. Like the, the, the literary devices and shit you were doing was like, like what the fuck? I burned them all. Um, the last one of those journals. Yeah, I know. Really? Every last one. That one? All of them. I think there was maybe one or two that are floating around somewhere. The one with the poetry in it? I burned all of them. That's like one of your highest talents. Like, that's crazy. Okay. Uh, okay. I, did not, I did not know that. I, I knew there was a, uh, I knew there was something that you burned and put in the fire, but I, did, I didn't know it was that. Holy shit. I burned a bunch of journals. Um, okay. Wow. So we got it. It's a concept album. And when you get to the end, well, didn't, did they say it was a concept album? Or let me just go back just to Who said that was a concept that. album? Um, I thought that that's what the, our DJ said, but uh, we listened to the first track and the last track. Felipe Soto! What's up, no, buddy? No, they didn't say that. They did not say They said that it was um, atmospheric, melodic, sci-fi, black metal. Okay. Um. So the first, so the, the song we listened to previously was the first song on the record? Yep. And, and then, then this, this is the last, last song. One. Okay, yep. so there. Yep. They're bookended. Yeah. I was like, going to say, I'm like, are you talking about dying again? What the hell? We just that, did this shit. That means start to finish. It. He didn't go anywhere. Right. The homie is still not he's, he's, doing well. Yeah, he's still. Um, but he, I, I agree. He can write his ass off. And like, I guess it's when you're in this situation, like, I think the way that he worded it was just completely relatable. Agree. I just, I, I, I didn't even find one spot that I was like, well, I don't know about that. Like every bit of it when you're in this, in this space is like this. Um, yeah, I, I think Ben's right. He went in, in a cycle. That makes a lot of sense. He what? Later, Tina Benina. Bye. Tina <laughs> Benina has a stream upcoming at some point, y'all. She, aside from Revo, she's our, uh, our music historian. Like, you really, between those two, you could really come up with a college-level color course for, like, Western music for the last 30 years or some shit like that. It would be oh. legit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, she, she she actually has that kind of breadth of knowledge. Tina, I'm adding you in as a mod, okay, over on Rumble. So I've got three mods up in here. <laughs> okay. Uh, it pierces me. It squeezes me. Tried. I try to oppose it. Tries. I might. Returning but stronger and nothing is right. Yeah. First of all, I appreciate the fact that he's very committed to rhyming because I have a hip hop background. So that's number one. Um, number two, I actually prefer this song lyrically to the other one because at least there's at least there's some fight in this song. Right. You know, he's saying, I try to resist, try as I might, returning stronger, nothing is right. I try to oppose it, right? That's what he's saying. I try to resist. If only I could rid myself, but the feeling persists. So in this situation. Yeah. He, he's trying, and even he's if trying you look at the course, it. in all that we champion, I'm left feeling sick, endorsing the villains, no good side to pick. I feel there's no options, no way back, not wishing to participate. This is my final act. That, I don't know, I don't want to say it's funny, but it's it's like literally verbatim, word for word, the attitude of the American electorate right now. Think of, I'm going to, I'm going to think about, think about the election, okay. think about the yeah. election, yep. and I'm going to read this again, Okay. okay. Took a complete left turn. I didn't expect that. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, look. Yeah, I mean, in all that we champion, I'm left feeling sick. Endorsing the villains. Oh. No good side to oh. pick. Oh. I, I feel, feel there's no, no options. options and no way back. Yeah. Not wishing to participate. This wow. is my final. Act. That's crazy. So, like, yeah. You do have like political nihilism. Like this. This is nihilism about life in Toto. But there is political nihilism where you're like, man, and, and that's where like a lot of black folks are right now you know like a couple years ago you know four years ago we had the whole trump is a nazi trump mm -hmm. is a whatever blah 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 mm -hmm. 
and black people realize, well, it's been four years and my life has not improved significantly since Biden. But they don't like, obviously, they don't want Trump. So right. it's like, right. so then people just say, well, what's the point? You're giving me two options. I, I, I despise both options. Both presidents are going to do exactly the diametric opposite of what I want done in the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm out. Mm -hmm. I understand that sentiment. I disagree with it. I think you got to fight as long as and as hard as you can. Yeah. But. To whatever degree you can. But. It's freaking exhausting, man. It's yeah. exhausting. Um, now, I think in this song, the, the two, the good sides to pick are dying and living. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when it says, in all that we champion, I'm left feeling sick, endorsing the villains, no good side to pick, I feel there's no options, no way back, not wishing to participate, it's my final act. Go ahead. Well, uh, okay, I don't think that this is what he meant, but for me, this song, I, I was able to like redeem this one and, and, and sing along with the lyrics even, because I do think that his, um, you know, the, the decision is between life and death, but for me, the decision is between Jesus and anything else, because... When you're talking about release or we're talking about um, like that, that squeezing, that piercing, that like exhaustion, that, you know, that's all of that stuff that you that you feel like literally those that's the language that Jesus uses. I mean, he talks about, you know, come to me, all you who are heavy, heavy laden and I'm going to give you rest. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's a sense in which our souls and our spirits so I was thinking today about um, there, there's a song that I posted up on my on my Facebook. I, I want Vinny to react to it at some point, <laughs> but it's a ten, it's over ten minutes, so it would cost me two reactions. <laughs> that would um, be funny if you got a, if you got a reaction. <laughs> um, but you know it's it's from a bunch of people. The first couple of singers are kind of country sounding, so I think you have to overlook that. But they 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 get better as they go, I think. Um, but it's like probably like 10 different people singing and it's like their, their experiences like with alcohol and stuff and everybody's being like honest about it. And it's just a really cool, it's a really cool song. And it got me to thinking like, we've, we've said before, like our hearts are like idle factories, like, and then I was like, well, I, I think that what happens is we're all trying to figure out how to live this life and how to survive and how to be happy and you know, like how to do this thing and like nobody wants to live 80 90 years on this planet in misery but i think that sometimes we can we can be there and and the years go by and we don't realize how many years have gone by that we've been kind of like stuck there and so i was thinking like well what we do is we figure out ways that's kind of ease the suffering you know whether it's you know some kind of chemical friendships you know um our job like there's just so many different ways that people, you know, ease the ease the suffering of of life. And I was like, I feel like at the end of the day that if God created us for himself and then our spirits are only free when they're in him, then anything else that we try to find that freedom in is is not ultimately going to bring us to that point of freedom. And I think what happens is we end up getting more and more and more tied down until it, we almost feel like death is the only option here. Um, but when our spirits, this is so crazy, but oh, this is so crazy to even say, and I feel like emotional to even say it, like maybe I shouldn't even say it, but there is a sense in which the great unaliving God, Jesus talks about this, that when you come into Christ, that you will die to yourself. So there is a death that happens in Christianity. So there is a sort of unaliving. I hate, I don't even like the word unaliving, but mm -hmm. like, that's what happens when you come into Christianity. And when, when you choose to leave that and to go towards something else. And so I think that there is a redeemable quality to the, the concept of death because it, br it can bring you into new life. And I think that people misunderstand what that, what that is. And they think, okay, the only way for me to find peace is if I, if I end this life here, and then that's going to somehow bring me into some more peaceful place. And you've said this before a bunch of times, like, mm -hmm. what if, what if where you go to after this life is significantly worse than where you are now? 
what if that what if you're wrong what if you know but when you think about okay there is there is a way and there is there is a a person a god who claims that when you enter into his way that he has a certain level of peace for you he has a certain level and i'm not saying that like you become a christian and life is easy and everything's everything's okay it's just that you have it's like being cold but having a blanket to warm you it's like you have you suffer too mm -hmm. but you have somebody that's going to hold you through that suffering so when i look at you know my life or you know like what if something happened to Vinny? What if something happened to ki the kids? What if something happened to Vinny and the kids in the same day? Like Job said, when all of that happened to him, he was like, the thing that I feared has come upon me. And for me, that would be like the greatest, like worst thing in my life. Like the biggest worst thing would be if something happened to all of them at the same time. Um, and, but what, what holds me is that I've lost a baby in the past and you still feel that suffering and that like longing that you you never gonna hold the baby like it's never gonna be like that like whatever's on the other side i don't think that that my child is like a, a crying baby in a bassinet waiting all this all this time for me i don't know where my child is or what's what is i do believe i'm gonna meet my child and i think that it's gonna be better than if it was a, a baby crying in a bassinet but i'm still on this side and i can't even imagine that um so i guess like it's like when you have Jesus, then you're like, okay, whatever happens at the end of it, like he's still going to be there. We were listening to this song the other night with like this music. And there was like this, like sort of like character that was like iridescent, I guess. And they had their hands up like this and they were holding like this, this symbol that looked like super symmetrical and just like mm -hmm. also iridescent. And inside was like a person like sitting like in a very, like a, a meditation pose, I yeah, guess you could say. Yeah, it's yoga. Yeah, and, and like every, lotus position. I yeah, think like, that's exactly what I was thinking. And it was just like moving like this, but it was like it was so mesmerizing because everything was like there was no chaos, and it was like I don't know. It was it was like yeah, that picture was crazy. That was an amphitheatron. It was. Yeah, it's it's a it's a way to try to explain the um, dimensions beyond four or five. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it, well, you know, I think it did really well with the person inside of the symbol and the. Yeah, you, you. There was a big guy, and then he was like holding that shape, of whatever that was, yeah. and then inside of it was another guy in the lotus position. Yeah. The guy in the lotus position, which is very interesting because that's what Hoffman says. Hoffman says that we're actually bigger. We're bigger than the universe, because space time is a headset, right? So when you put on your headset. The characters in that world are like, think about Fortnite. If you were to pull that person out and scale it, they'd be like at mm -hmm. your ankle, right? Mm -hmm. So like in order to operate in the world of Fortnite, like you're this minuscule person, but there's a sense in which you're bigger than the entire Fortnite universe. Yeah, yep, yep. That's Hoffman's claim, Interesting. <laughs> which is crazy. Whatever we are, wherever we are, you know, like that, that's, that's just yeah. so that's such yeah. a crazy idea to me. Jesus said that when an unclean spirit leaves a person, it goes out into the wilderness or whatever, seeking another place to inhabit. And then he says he comes back with seven demons who are worse than him. And the state of the repossessed man is worse than at first. And that is such that that has so many implications yeah that does has so, go ahead what, what, oh, what no, are your I'm thought not. process I'm, I'm you know precautionary tale go ahead okay so what, what do you mean precautionary tale well it's just a precautionary tale like if you're like you go through a very dark period and then like you move to a good place and then you have decisions that you have to make like you know when darkness comes back to you or when those old habits come back to you or you know when you've been sober for x amount of years but you still feel that like i want to drink like if it's it's those precautionary tales like when you grab it back like it can be a lot worse than what you left behind so it was just a precautionary tale in that regard but okay yeah i can rock with that so well you know it, it's just about the the demons returning seven times worse because and I, we saw this in downtown ministry where people are 
tired of the consequences of those cycles and habits. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there is a power exchange that happens by indulging in that. And so there is that pull. Mm -hmm. And there was one lady who you were pretty convinced that she was oppressed by demons. And I agree 100 percent. I mean, I get it. You know, like we're mostly atheist, seculars, whatever in this forum. But if you would have seen this lady, I promise you, especially her eyes, like there'd be times you'd catch, you know. So then, so then Soraya's out there, like, we're going to cast out this demon, blah, 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 blah. And I just stayed quiet and I was watching her. You remember that situation? I just stayed quiet and I watched her. And then Soraya's like, blah, 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 you'll be free, blah, blah, blah. And she was, I, I was just looking at her and I just knew, man, I just knew. And what Basically what I heard was she doesn't want to let this shit go, man. I had it's, been praying with this person for so long. It's tormenting her, but the Lord told me, like, she doesn't want to let that go. And then you asked her. So I, so I finally looked at her, and I said, do you want this thing to leave you? And she said, no. And I said, oh, that, that explains and I said, <laughs> why I said, we're okay. only going anywhere. And I did. I was so surprised that you asked that question. Yeah. And then, you were looking at me all weird, like, come on, help me out here. And I was yeah. just sitting there watching her because I was... My spirit was discerning, like, oh. Yeah. Well, when you have a teammate like you, like, you can do that. You can kind of check out and, and like, you know. Mm. Um, calling me downwards, I try to resist. If I, like, I, I mean, we got a lot of people suffering with uh, serious depression in our, in our mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And... That's one thing about the resilient. That's another thing that the metal community taught me was that you can be in the, on on the the brink, but if you get some good music and you get yep. some a couple people around yeah. you, you can you can push through. Um, and I think this guy's fatal flaw is that if you look at all the pronouns he uses, they're all first person singular. I, me. The, the quickest way the quickest way for all this to be over in a miserable way because you're gonna die everybody's gonna mm -hmm. die but do you want abject misery for your entire life until that yeah, day comes that's, or that's would, you, would you would you do you want some sort of freedom and it's dangerous it's dangerous when you play around with that stuff if you're not really truly committed to changing your life and getting rid of that shit then don't play around with it because shit gets really hectic in if you don't have the spiritual resources to even understand what's going on, forget about it. Yeah, yeah and the other thing, yeah, exactly. Like, I, no disrespect, but I worry so much for my, like, secularist friends, you know, with what's about to come around the pike yep. in a year or three. It's 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 like, ugh. Yep. Oh, see some of this bitch! Shout yeah. out to Yoko Ono. Yeah, I think that, like, there's a sense in which we we don't necessarily we don't see that realm like the supernatural and like the the demons and Thank angels you, Mr. and stuff like that like we don't we don't see that but sometimes you know most people have some experience or some story they're like well this happened it was kind of weird you know whether it's you know your their hair raising on the back of their neck or your arm when you go into a certain location like this sort of feeling of unease like something's up and then you end up yeah, finding out something about the place or like you, um, you know, you have certain experiences at, at locations or even maybe at your own home, like you're looking, you're getting bored. And so you're like, well, let me look into some spiritual stuff. And like, there, you know, there's two types of spirituality to look. There's like positive spirituality where you're seeing like, okay, this is like supernatural stuff where people are getting healed and there's, you know, whatever. There's like positive stuff, positive, pe positive things people are doing. And then sometimes, you know, we just, people want to see like, well, what's on the darker side? Like, what are those demons? What do, what do you mean that that house is haunted? Uh -huh. what's, and then it starts you on this trail where where you're looking deep into these dark things. And we don't know the level of influence those things have necessarily. And each person is different. I think it's, it's no different than, you know, one person can try a drug and they can try it once and be done with it. Well, somebody else can try it and they can be hooked for life. And it ruins them. And I think that, you know, the spiritual stuff is the same. Like, I think that some people are 
predisposed to a sort of strength in spirituality and the capacity that they have from day one of their of their encounters is can you either have the capacity to hold like a lot of spiritual spirituality for good or for evil and you choose which bucket you want to fill and um so i think th i think that there's high hope like i always look hopeful like in a hopeful sort of way at people that have like kind of crazy spiritual encounters that are on the negative side because i'm like yeah that means that person has a lot of potential in spiritual stuff if oh, if they go in the other direction i never even um yeah that's real so you know i i mean myself included like there's there's crazy stuff i could tell you crazy stories that that are hard to believe that have happened with me and my spirituality and i also could tell you dark stories that you would hardly believe um Vinny doesn't even know so i mean it's i i understand that there's you're capable we are capable of many things but our intention is very important paramount yep and um, paramount that's all you got yeah yeah anyway uh what'd you get the song uh this one was a 9.6 it's it's right up there i mean i still don't like the concept of people you know unaliving themselves but uh, Ben, send me an email of the specific song that got muted, and I'll um, I'll upload it to Rumble, and you guys will be able to watch it. All right, guys, send it in an email. Send it to my secret email. We will see you on the other side of the break, Louis Retana. We will see you on the other side of the break. Vin, out. Sorry, out. Go.